Thank you. Please be seated. The next order of business is uh, a recognition of the Windsor High School CIAC Class Double M Girls Outdoor Track and Field State Champions. So, Mr. Coach Curse, if you could bring in the uh, girls girls team for recognition, girls, girls for recognition. I can take a picture with all, all of us and hopefully the girls in front. There's so many of them, that's going to be tough. Want to bring them here for a picture? Right here. And then I'm just going to move to the side. You want to stand in the back? Paul, do you want to have yep. folks stand behind them? We can integrate our group. Are we supposed to be in it? Yes, no. The president, the president said he wants us in it. So <laughs> the president says. The president says we do. Okay. All right. Lean Jeez. I have to do it two more times, so. <laughs> We're next going to recognize the Windsor High School CIAC Class Double M Boys Outdoor Track and Field State Champions. might be on to something with this. <laughs> get them in, get them out. <laughs> no wonder they're a good track team. <laughs> The next group we're going to recognize is the Windsor High School CIAC Class L Baseball State Champions. Our next item on the agenda is the recognition of the Windsor High School juried art show. And uh, we're going to have uh, our, our 
winners are folks that we've selected artwork for to come by. Uh, the Windsor High School Art Show Board of Education Purchase Prize is for Ainsley Sesportis for Counting Sheep, Superintendent's Purchase Prize to Amina Atazi for Women and Sage Park, and Sage Marie De Rogers for Solidarity, and the Windsor High School Prize to Suba Camille for Start of Journey. I'm not sure, hopefully everybody is here tonight. We can get pictures and recognitions with... Yeah. Uh, why don't we take it by their artwork? I mean, you can take one or two. What's that? I mean, you can take one or two. You get to pick two. They, they chip me. We're now going to hear a little bit about each of the pieces of art. So. so after the past two years, the Windsor High School Art Department was thrilled to have a full in-person show this year um, in the Windsor High School Library in May to include art, CTE, and fashion students. As part of the awards, the Board of Education, Central Office, and Windsor High School select individual student work to professionally frame and display as part of their permanent, permanent collection. So there's a couple examples there. Here are the 2022 purchase prizes. So this year's Board of Education Purchase Prize goes to Ainsley Susportis for her colored pencil titled, or drawing titled, uh, Counting Sheep, which is here, you can hold it. <laughs> Ainsley explored how mental illnesses affect women in their daily lives. From her statement, she says, mental illness is individual, but I chose to express the emotions and feelings women with various mental illnesses might experience to help educate those who don't have me mental illnesses and to show women who may suffer from mental illness, that they aren't alone. Ainsley will pers be pursuing a degree in art therapy at Olivet Nazarene University in the fall while continuing to compete in, this, in swimming at the national level. Congratulations, Ainsley. <laughs> this year's Central Office Administration selected two purchase prize winners who demonstrate the breadth of our programs with Amina Itazi putting voice to social justice issues and Sage Marie de Rogers capturing our surroundings. Amina Itazi's painting, Woman, was created to combat how plus size women are seen in the media. She states, plus size women are often viewed less feminine or womanly compared to skinnier people. I wanted to show that a woman is a woman no matter what their size. I also want my viewers to have confidence in themselves and accept themselves when they look at this painting. Amina plans to pursue a career as an esthetician. Congratulations, Amina. Sage Marie's ceramic relief titled Solitude was part of her AP in Art and Design investigation exploring how does nature impact our emotions? Inspired by a river she spent time at in Enfield where she grew up, she states, this piece is meant to express the feeling of being alone but content. I utilize cool colors with some warm tones along with lots of textures to enhance the visual experience that one might enjoy as if they were, were there themselves. Sage Marie plans to attend the University of Hartford in the fall of 2023 to study ceramics. This is her relief right here. Do you want to hold that or? I mean, I'll take it up, why not? <laughs> Congratulations, Sage. <laughs> the 
This year's Windsor High School Purchase Prize goes to Suba Kamili for her watercolor painting titled Start of Journey, a piece from her AP Art and Design Sustained Investigation where she explored the question, what is the journey of death? From her statement, in the year 2021, I had many important members of my family pass away due to COVID-19. The idea of reincarnation in life cycle called samsara fascinated me and the belief that death could be depressing yet alleviating was interesting. My art piece titled Start of Journey is a presentation of how samsara starts. Fire presents the ritual of burning the body in Hinduism. Red spider, lilies symbolize the guide to reincarnation and goodbyes. Suba will be attending Yukon this fall to study management and engineering for manufacturing. Congratulations, Suba. Please check out our website to see fit pictures of it and video footage of the art show with some amazing student artwork and fashion creations. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, our artists. Uh, it was very exciting to have the art show back at Windsor High School in the library, the Media Center, um, and have a fashion show that night as well. And uh, uh, coming back from COVID, it's, it's just great for us to be able to celebrate um, our students in this way again. Um, so again, thanks to for all the young artists here and uh, Congratulations. Next item on the agenda is uh, an announcement regarding Windsor Educator of the Year. And I'll look to Ms. Batchelder to make the announcement. Item E came comes before. Okay. We'll, we'll, do you we'll, want me to? No, we'll we'll do item. Damari is here now. He wasn't here earlier. So the next item, sorry, is a recognition of the Board of Ed student representative, Damari Borns. If he could, again, another picture opportunity. <laughs> Maybe I'll step in the front. I'll have everybody step behind though for the picture. But. As a board, we're getting our steps in tonight. <laughs> uh, the next item is the 
the announcement of the Windsor Educator of the Year and Paraeducator of the Year. Uh, Ms. Batchelder. Thank you. So um, as many of you know, we do bring forth our uh, Paraeducator and uh, Teacher of the Year in our September board meeting where they will be introduced by their principal or direct supervisor. But um, at this point, I'm just going to acknowledge who they are and just give a little quick um, synopsis of who those individuals are for um, for you. So Carrie Canoli is recognized, Canoni, sorry, excuse me. I think I'm hungry. Is it Canoli? No. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Canoni it was recognized as our Windsor Public Schools 2022-2023 Educator of the Year. She began her teaching career with Windsor Public Schools in 2003. She began as a reading teacher at Clover Street School and after six years moved into a new role as a reading specialist. She stayed in that role for two years and then became the literacy coach for Pequannock School until ultimately shifting gears and becoming the school STEM coach in 2013. And that's where she currently um, is positioned today. Our paraeducator of the year is Beth O'Shea. Beth has been working at Windsor Public Schools for a combined 21 years. She enjoys inspiring her students with an emphasis on imagination and discovery that they can take with them into the world outside the classroom. Prior to moving to Oliver Ellsworth, O'Shea worked at Roger Wolka Elementary Childhood Center in the capacities of special education, paraeducator, tutor, and one-to-one -one during the summer programs. Since her time at Oliver Ellsworth, O'Shea worked as a kindergarten paraprofessional, later on moving to the preschool full day program as a paraeducator for the last seven years. Congratulations to both our Educator of the Year and the Paraeducator of the Year, as well as all the other nominees who, who were there from their individual schools. Thanks so much. <clears throat> and uh, both uh, Carrie and Beth uh, live in town, and their, student, their children went through Windsor School, so great to see them uh, recognized. Next order of business, <clears throat> I think there may be a, a motion to change the order. Moved that we move item 10, which is a replacement for Board of Education member Marion Kahn to be taken up before audience to visitors and then proceeding with the rest of the agenda afterwards. Is there a second? There's a second. Please. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, second by Mr. Panos. Any discussion about switching the order? Seeing and hearing none. Um, all those in favor of moving item 10 uh, to before audience to visitor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Um, I'm assuming Ms. Taylor voted aye, so the vote would carry 800. Can we hear? So, can we hear? Can you hear? Ms. Daly, can we find out if we can hear Ms. Taylor? Microphone. Oh, there she's unmuted. Right. It looks as though she is attempting to speak. The box is highlighted, but I'm not hearing any audio from her. Um, if, if allowed, she could enter in the chat if you chose to recognize it that yeah, way. If, uh, Ms. Taylor, if you could in the chat indicate whether you were, you were voting to, to move the motion for the replacement Board of Ed member up. If and not, she did. the record will have to reflect 700. She responded aye. Okay, thank you. Okay. So uh, next we'll go to the actual motion. Mr. President, um, on behalf of the Windsor Democratic Town Committee, it is my duty to move that the Board of Education elect Darlene Place 
to serve the remaining term of Miriam Kahn or until the next general town election for members of the Board of Education. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Williston. Mr. Williston, uh, any discussion? Yes, sir. Mr. Lockhart? Mr. Lockhart? Okay. Uh, Mr. President, thank you. So, uh, on behalf of the Democratic Caucus, um, we are, we are um, in the DPT, we are putting forth uh, Ms. Darlene Clace. Um, brief overview, Ms. Darlene Clace is a former um, Windsor, DTC, Windsor DTC chair. Ms. Clace is also a former vice president of the Windsor Board of Education, as well as a former minority leader of the Windsor Board of Education. Um, she has served numerous years um, on this particular board, and um, kind of coincidentally that, you know, when I became a board member, um, she was the vice president at the time and welcomed me onto the board um, as I took over for someone's um, unfinished <coughs> term. So um, on behalf of the DTC, it is the hope that, um, that the rest of this board will accept our um, nominee to replace uh, Ms. Miriam Khan. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mr. Panos? Uh, I've had the pleasure to serve on the board in the past with Darlene Clays and have found her to be very well organized, prepared, professional, and a person of common sense. Uh, I have had my differences of opinion with her and fully expect that we will disagree on issues in the future. But she has always shown herself to be a person of patience, and I have certainly tried that patience. I don't know. Uh, and willing to understand the other viewpoint even when disagreeing. I think it will be a, she'll be a, a very positive addition to the Board of Education. It will be my pleasure to serve with her again. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak regarding this? Seeing and hearing none, um, I'd like to call uh, I think we can do it. I don't think we need to call the individual roll, or should we? You have to call the roll. Okay. Uh, Ms. Daly, if you could call the roll then. Certainly. Robin Daly, Board of Education Stenographer. Jill Cantor? Yes. David Fury? Yes. Julene Golinski? Yes. Jeremy Halleck? Uh, yes. Leonard Lockhart? Yes. Paul Panos? Yes. Ayana Taylor? She responded yes in the chat. Nathan Wollaston. Yes. Passes eight to zero. Welcome, Ms. Clace. You may come up to be sworn in by the town clerk. You get to come up to the front now. <laughs> the next uh, item of business is audience to visitor. And uh, Ms. Daly, if you could read your script. Good evening, this is Robin Daly from the Superintendent's Office. If there is anyone from the public who would like to address the board, you may do so in two different ways. If you are using the Zoom application on your mobile device or computer, you may enter your comments into the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the Zoom menu bar. Or you may raise your hand on your computer if your device has a microphone by selecting the participants icon on the Zoom menu bar and then clicking raise hand or by dialing star nine on your phone. You'll be given three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. When you are called on, you'll be prompted with you are now unmuted. 
For clear communication, we ask that you do not place the call on speakerphone. No comments can be made against the employees of the school district or children outside of your own. Uh, thank you. And uh, just so people know that um, at the 2.30 mark, uh, Vice President Lockhart will raise a uh, red card just indicating time to start wrapping up your remarks, and then he'll hold it permanently at the three-minute mark. If you're calling in um, or in on Zoom and you don't see, obviously, if you're on the phone, you won't see it, um, he may have to interject at the 2.30 mark just to let you know it's time to start wrapping up your remarks. Um, I'll first look to see if there's uh, people in the boardroom who'd like to come up and speak to the board. going into summer school twice, I continued to push and I was able to get him in. My concern is not for my child because I'm clearly loud and I can clearly push. Um, my concern is for other students whose parents may not have the gift of time that I have and they may not be able to push the way that I do and those children are going to get left behind. The parameters for our for summer school are narrow in that we only expect uh, to prevent regression for students. If we're looking at my son as the example, the only way he could regress would be if he forgot the alphabet at this point. Um, so I think we need to consider why the parameters are so narrow and those children who we are leaving behind. And I'm not trying to trash. I am. I'm not trying to trash anybody who works like with special ed. I they're dealing with the parameters that they are given. So I just think that's something that the board needs to consider because if we are not concerned with our students who need the most help, then we're not looking out for all of our students. Um, secondly, I just wanted to give a shout out to teachers who I have worked with this year, either at work or who worked with my children. This year has been extremely difficult. Um, I know a lot of teachers came in this year saying it felt more difficult, difficult than the pandemic years. I think because we expected everything to feel normal and get back to normal, and that, we all know that that wasn't the case. So I just wanted to give a shout out to the teachers in the district that I feel deserve an A plus in my book. Uh, Ms. Pointek at the high school, she's a math teacher. She was continually, continually looking out for her students and helping out, offering extra help, um, working with every student, and I just commend her for that. Uh, Mr. Keach Longo at Clover Street School was tremendous uh, in helping my in helping my own son. He was fantastic. Also, um, employees Chris Tafaro. That would be helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, Ms. Cristofaro and Ms. May were amazing, and I have told Ms. May I hope she's put in her name for um, principal at Clover Street. I think she'd do a fantastic job. I don't know anybody else who cares about the students the way that she does. Um, Ms. McCann at Poquanic School, she has been fantastic. She has worked consistently with my uh, son who is behind in his reading. And Ms. Scott, who has had a Jacobson child two years running, and for that she deserves probably like a million dollars and a vacation. Um, so just, she's amazing. And also Ms. Romero, she has really, I think, found her niche in her role as assistant principal, and I commend the work that she's doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else um, in the boardroom would like to address the board? <coughs> Anyone else in the boardroom? If not, Miss um, uh, Daly, is there uh, anyone online or on the phone? At this time, there are attendees um, in the room, but there are no hands raised. And there are currently no open questions in the Q&A feature. Okay, without objection, I'd like to close audience to visitor. Seeing no objections, audience to visitors closed. The next item is the consent agenda. 
and there'll be a motion by Mr. Lockhart, but um, we'll first see if there are items that would like to be pulled from the consent agenda. A. A? Yeah. Okay. Financial report, we'll pull that. Any, anything else? Okay, I think that's the only one. Mr. President, I move that we accept by unanimous consent. Um, Agenda items 4B, C, and D, enrollment, food service, and human resources reports. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor of the consent agenda as to 4B, 4C, and 4D say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? And it's either 700 or 800 or 900. She said I. Oh, she did. Okay, yes. Very good. So it's <laughs> Thank you for my, being my eyes here <laughs> and ears. <laughs> motion carries 900. Another motion, Mr. Lockhart? Yes, sir. I move that the board accepts the consent agenda item 4A, which is the financial report. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos to accept. 4A, and we'll have a discussion. Mr. Panos, since you asked it to be removed, we'll have you start that discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, Ms. Batchelder, could you um, tell us what happened uh, with, with the special ed tuition here? Uh, we went from a, an expect, you know, balance of 4%. I guess we would have exceeded, but it appears that we're, we, uh, we went from a uh, uh, it's like a $211,000 to a million sixty-two for the um, for the final ex, ex, uh, uh, expected. Uh, I think it looks like we picked up about half, about five hundred thousand, just in one month, and then the, for the remainder here, it, it's gone to uh, about a half a month for Ju for for J June. Um, it, Gone up to a million sixty-two thousand. Um, did we have some additional um, students to, so that were identified I, and sent out? What, we, in other words, we're in the hole. Let's say, so to speak. I mean, we're over budget by a million sixty-two. And million so 62. I didn't hear the original uh, line item. Are you just asking about special ed tuition? Special ed tuition. Okay. okay. Um, so the monthly report, so I've updated the board how in the deficit we've been with special ed all through budget season tell, in, informing everybody that we are significantly in the hole this year. Same thing happened last year, which is why we had to add money. So the way they bill, you only see what we've actually paid to date. The column to the far right that's shaded I do every June because this only goes through May 31st and so our projections is that we are going to be in the hole a million dollars it's been the projection probably since about November um, which is why I put a budget freeze on the budget a few months ago in order to be able to compensate for this one line item okay so you could project in April or March that you were going to be in the hole. Is that the idea? What? I couldn't project. You could? or Yeah, could, we yeah. knew this back in November. And we, what we talked about all through budget season, budget for next school year, about how much we are in the deficit this school year. Right. Uh, well. But I, the way the report is, it, it just shows it. The I way understand. the report is, is what is actually spent. Right. Um, so, so this was expected, and um, and so, and it was. Uh, I'm anticipating the next uh, year here. Are we? Are you going to? Do you, do you think you're going to be asking for another one million dollars for special ed tuition? I don't know. So we that it's it's such a volatile account. Um, We've never been where we are today or last year for five, six years. We've always trended really well. Um, the number of special ed kids have remained around the same number. Right. It's the, the amount of money, these out of district. Yeah, so the, some of the schools are 
schools are billing us per student almost a thousand dollars more than the previous year their tuition increases have been a month yeah have been not a year a month yeah have been astronomical which then even though i think actually this year we have less than we had last year but the tuitions are more money so mm. and we have three or four students that are between two hundred and fifty thousand yeah. to half a million yeah. We've never seen that before, a year, ever. Well, since I've been here, we've never gone above 150,000 a student. And we're, uh, we've had we're some bypassing 200, 200 before, yeah. easy now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but I, I just want to point out on the flip side, the town of Windsor received close to $500,000 more than what they received last year because this is all excess cost. So they receive the money that the that we're in the hole for this school year. They received it all? Yes. It they all receive like anything above that threshold of 4.5%, uh, the 92,000 times 4.5. So anything that would be 500,000 really is not on, on, most of that money is not on Windsor. It's. It's right, on, so it's, it's on, on, the, on the, the state, except there's also mm. they only pay about eighty percent. They only eighty percent. Right. Yeah, so it's really not. <laughs> yes. it's no, not, but they don't receive. Say it's all paid for. I know, but I just want to un I make sure county. everyone understands what was what they received last year. They received five hundred thousand more this year because of how much we were in the hole last year and this year that they were not expecting. Well. So when okay. we go, so when we, Mr. President, so when we go through budget time, when we go through budget time, we can forecast that whatever the amount of children we have that we can anticipate is going to how much it's going to cost. We're going to be expecting that as a finance committee for that to show, and then we should also know that they've already collected a half million dollars, and then we can forecast based off of what we currently have because it's very volatile. That you know what we may be in this situation again a year from now. So we just want to make sure that we, the messaging from this board should be to the town council as well as the citizens during the referendum that this is something that possibly will not go away anytime soon as long as we have the same amount of students with the same amount of cases, of the same cases within mm -hmm. the district. So we, we, I think we could be better prepared for it. Yeah. I think that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. I mean, this is now two years in a row. and. And for some of these students came in this year that weren't here last year. We we get excited when certain when there when we are able to get certain um, you know payments off our payroll, if you will. Um, but then students <clears throat> come into district that we have no control over, and that's really what we've seen these past two years. So, okay. Can I just add to that? I mean, I think our department works very very hard to get the students back into our public schools. We work very, very hard to develop programs within the walls of our building to keep the students here with their peers in their neighborhood schools. I think sometimes what's hard and what Ms. Batchelder touched upon is we do have students who are perhaps in DCF care who come with an outplacement already um, that we then have to foot the bill for. And that can also add to the rising costs because we can't predict that either. Yeah. Um. But take in mind that they only pay 80 percent, you know, of the excess, you know, which is, which is what we, we pay, what, five times the average? Well, I think that's a matter that I know um, President Lockhart with CABE, you guys were collecting data. Um, my governing bodies have been collecting data to push the state to pay us more. Yep. Um, and it failed. And it's, it's been hard because we can't get the state to pay more. Right. Right. And, and I know I talked to <clears throat> many of our delegation. And it's, it's an issue, the excess cap, cost cap is an issue to every district in the state. <laughs> this is not rich districts versus poor district. This affects everyone. And we still are not able to um, get the attention that I think, you know, that's, that's needed. And I, I know I've lobbied with uh, President Lockhart in the past on this issue. And it was a major issue that CABE, the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education, pushed as well. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, the, the, the thing is, it's one of the few things in our budget that we really have trouble predicting. We know what students we have at the moment, 
but we don't know who may come into our district or what other students that are in our district may need more services than they've had in the past. So it, it's, um, I appreciate the fact that you have been bringing this up to us mm -hmm. and that you put a freeze on other items here mm -hmm. knowing that this um, was likely to go up. I appreciate that. Any other questions, Mr. Well, I, I just like to point out that this is, I mean, $300,000 per person, you're, you're dealing with something which is, it should be questioned, in other words, regardless of what it is. And I don't know if CABE does that or who, who does that. Um, you know, you're doing, that sounds like something that is unusual. Um, you know, and, and I guess I guess I'm asking is where we're sending them. Uh, are, are they just arbitrarily raising their rates? That, that I, I'd like to maybe sometime when we get into finance, we discuss something like that. But uh, you know, for this for this purposes, I'm just concerned about any excess. Yeah. Of, I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. What we're running into right now is we can't even find schools for some of our students because the need is so great. Um, and so I think then the schools, sometimes private businesses, can charge more because there's the demand. Okay. All right. That, that, that. So that, that's an item that, be, you know, can be, uh, it, it's more of a political uh, problem, I would say. I would say, it's, you know, something to talk to the legislature about. But um, I, I guess we also have a similar thing, um, Ms. Batchelder, regarding special ed transportation. We have, we have, uh, we're in the red, two hundred ninety-two thousand. Right? You expect. So is, is it the same sort of thing? Um, so, right. So special ed transportation, um, it's a little different than the tuition because we do transport all of our out of district students to these um, places, but the special ed transportation is in district that students that need um, the smaller buses the type 2 buses vans wheelchairs so all of that th they get transported separately so again if students come in and need a uh, specialized transportation those are always added costs that we can't predict however um, the regular red transportation is up has a surplus of about 426,000 right. um, because of the numbers of the big buses that we weren't running this year because we didn't have the drivers. Um, so in those two have always been, I knew we were in the, the good overall those two all year, but this, this report um, breaks them out. But again, it, it, we're in the hole every year with special ed tuition and transportation. It's just from the unknown throughout the school year that when kids come in. All right. It's just something to remember for, for budget time. Um, you have special ed tutor salaries. I see that the um, the bottom line is that we only have three. You're only expecting to have $3,800 exit. So that's, uh, that's yeah, in the low, it's quite low compared to uh, you know, last year's, <clears throat> past years. Right. Yep, absolutely. But we return, we've never returned the amount that we've returned the past two years. We returned it because of COVID. Um, this is a normal year where we, we're, we're always within 100,000, less than 100,000 given back yeah, to the town. Yeah, typically, but yeah, no, yeah, and I've reported this, the town knows, has known this, that we weren't giving money back for about two months now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wollaston? Um, I just had a few comments towards um, just the, I guess the comment made about um, why uh, out of district is increasing so much for a special education being, just being someone who works in and out of a place where kids get sent pretty much. So from what I've seen on my end, there's a lot more uh, the intakes we've been doing are a lot more uh, lower functioning kids who require more supports. They're requiring a lot more uh, just support in general than kids that were had in the past. So now we're seeing a change in 
what's coming in, which is going to cost more money, cost more services compared to what was passed. And the place where the bill is going is to the student because the student just requires so much. And then the bill is not really going to the student. It's going to the district that the student is from. So just from being someone who works at a place like that, you see that it's kind of what we're dealing with on that side. So. Thank you. Ms. Galinsky? Hi, thank you. Um, well, one, I want to thank Ms. Batchelder because I, I certainly appreciate the projected balance for the end of June that you have in here. Um, I think it helps all of us on the board as well as any individual that is listening to these meetings to understand that we are actually pretty spot on in terms of where we are ending mm -hmm. for this uh, fiscal year. And so it's hard to understand that when you're not familiar with numbers. Um, and I, I absolutely understand that. And so I just want everyone to know that obviously every category differs. You know, some may be over, some may be under. But at the end of the day, we're, I, I want to give kudos to those who approved the budget this the past year and for all of the hard work that you all do. Um, but if I could add one little suggestion, um, if we can do, if we could add the percentage uh, variance balance too, because I think that's going to help other people understand where we're ending up because they're going to see these really large numbers. But at the end of the day, um, when you're dealing with this $6 million budget and you might be $500,000 under or over, when you see that percentage, it's going to make a lot more sense for people to kind of connect the dots. Whereas you see the large numbers and it's like, oh my goodness, we are so far over, so far under, but the percentage really tells that story. Um, if we could do that, that would be great. And if not, I understand too. It's just merely a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, then I'd like to have the question called. So all those in favor of item 4A, the financial report, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Did we hear Ms. Taylor? She says aye. <laughs> Motion carries 9 0 0. Next, we have the approval of minutes. And usually I have Ms. Taylor make the motion, but I maybe look to Mr. Lockhart in this case as, as Ms. Taylor is remote. Are there any minutes that need to be pulled? I'm hearing nothing. Mr. President, with that being said, I move that all the minutes on the agenda for today, which is 5A through 5D, be adopted. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Motion carries 9-0-0. Next item on the agenda is the student representative report. Well, um, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, good evening. As you know, the class of 2022 has graduated, and we're all moving on to the next chapter of our lives. There's not much for me to <clears throat> present on, but I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to be on the board. Um, I know a lot of kids have been coming up to me inside of the school saying, oh, how can I do this and how can I do that? So, you know, there's, the shoes are going to be filled regardless of what happens. Um, I do take pride in Windsor schools so much so that I keep coming back to the middle schools and elementary schools to help out. So this is a great school district. I'm glad that I grew up here. And I just want to, again, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your service. As we said earlier in recognizing you, um, it's, it, we've had um, a couple of students this year who didn't mind speaking your mind. You, neither of you were, were timid about it, and uh, it's good for us uh, on the board. Um, when I was uh, a representative of the School Governance Council, I got to hear a couple of also very uh, open-minded and, and students willing to, to say their truth. And uh, not having that, it's been nice to, to have you um, on here um, to give the students perspective. Okay. 
Yes, I'd also like yeah. to uh, praise your uh, contributions here. I very much uh, appreciate your candor in telling us uh, how it is objectively at the high school. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Ms. Cantor? I'd just like to thank you and congratulate you and your classmates. I think you're awesome. I think you did a fabulous job. It's really good to do civic duty and continue to do that for your whole life. I know you will do well whatever you do. And come back and visit us. Remember us. Thank you for everything you've done. And you may have to come back and give some guidance to her son who will be moving to the high school next year. So you've been coming back to, to Sage Park and the elementary schools. You've got to come back for Ms. Cantor next year. Anyone else? Mr. Wollaston. Yeah, I'll just say you're a great young man with a bright future ahead of you. Uh, it's been nice to get to know you and work with you on the board. Thank you. Mr. Halleck. Thank you. I just want to say congratulations and I wish you all the best all the best going forward. Thank you. Mr. Lockhart. I just want to say do well. I'm not gonna say good luck. To say good luck means that Windsor has not prepared you. I believe we've prepared you well. And um I just hope I'm alive and well to see where you're going to be in your life 10, 15, 20 years from now. Um, you got a good head on your shoulders. You speak your piece. And um, you represented, you and Taylor did a great job representing Winter High School this year. So I'm looking forward to great things out of you. No pressure, but you know what? You have to speak certain things into existence. So hopefully, you know, I'm alive to see you do well. Um. Ms. Galinsky. Sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Uh, congratulations. I cannot wait to see what you do, and I imagine you're going to have great success. And thank you for giving us um, such an insight into students' minds at the high school because we don't know what's going on and how you all think, and <clears throat> we are so appreciative for all that you've done to help us understand. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item of business is the President's Report. <clears throat> I received... Um, a card and it was really addressed to me but also to, to all the board members and it was from the desk of our kid governor Makai Etienne Modeste it said dear Mr. Fury and board members thank you for your support and for allowing me to share my platform Makai and again um, how what an excitement we did have this fall when we had our first kid governor from from Windsor Public Schools um, and uh, uh, he's uh, has an, a, a great program that it's really hard to be against taking care of animals. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, and my daughter used to work for Humane Society, and uh, so it's a, a passion that, that that I have as well as my daughter has. And um, uh, I just as um, uh, with our student rep, I expect great things from Makai going going forward. Um, I usually don't speak uh, regarding um, people who've, who've spoken at audience to visitor, but I, I want to take one thing that, uh, that uh, Becky had mentioned early on, and that is uh, things that I was hearing in the district as well. I had so many teachers come up to me and say how great it was to be back in school and have the students there. But there were still a number of them who also said, how difficult this was, as difficult as it was having hybrid and trying to teach some kids who were there and not there. So we understand the struggles that have gone on in the school year for all the staff and parents and students. And we, you know, it, it's up to us as the board to, and uh, the district to, to make sure going forward that uh, we, we recognize uh, this, this issue, and I think Dr. Hill was great in, in getting ahead of the curve regarding social emotional learning. A number of years ago, we had both parents and staff say some of the best things, the most important things to improve climate in our schools was social emotional learning. And we've just scratched the surface. They've done a great job, but it's really just still the beginning. And luckily, we still have federal funds next year to keep those staff in place um, and train more students as, as they come through and also reaching out to staff and parents and families to supplement what goes on already at our, our family resource centers. Um, I was not able to attend graduation. I was out of the state, 
but I know President Lockhart did a great job um, uh, in my stead, and people were said, most people have said it was so exciting to get back to the Bushnell um, and having people again together again, um, just as I had mentioned earlier about the art show, having people in our buildings again. Um, uh, I also, unfortunately, was not able to attend the Sage Park uh, graduation um, from eighth grade to ninth grade. Um, and, uh, but again, it, it's those, those changes, those kind of historic points of, of switching schools and going on to the next level that are so important. And it's been good that we've been able to, to honor our students this year in that way. Uh, a shout out to Megan Hislop and the Technology Student Association. We'll be sending students both from the high school and the middle school to the TSA championships in Dallas um, at the end of the month. Um, uh, you, know, um, you know, I am a tech, I, I'm not very good at technology, but I appreciate it so much. And what's happening in our district regarding STEM, whether it's robotics clubs or the TSA um, at the high school and the middle school, uh, shout out to her and, and our students who've earned the, that right to go and for the district and, and finding the monies to be able to send them there. Thank you, Dr. Oliver. Um, <clears throat> uh, I want to wish uh, folks a restful summer to the best you can. Um, I saw a sign up in front of Paquonic near where I live where it says read, read, read. And I couldn't emphasize that anymore. Um, hopefully students will be out there and maybe get to pick books that they want to read. Uh, there's a kickoff this coming week, I believe, this week at the Windsor Library for the summer reading program. Um, and they usually uh, contest for adults as well, so hopefully people will check that out. Uh, we had a great collaboration for Juneteenth um, on Saturday between the Windsor Library Association, the Windsor Library, and Windsor Public Schools. Got to see uh, Mr. Wallace in there and Dr. Hill, uh, Dr. Oliver. A lot of doctors were there. So. Uh, not, not Dr. Lockhart. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> not, 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 not the title yet. <laughs> Um, but that was a great way to recognize uh, students um, as well. And I'm hoping maybe in the future that we can have more schools represented. Last year we had the book that was done at Oliver Ellsworth and students who read from, from, from uh, excerpts from there. Uh, and this year we had some singing and we had some, um, some uh, thoughts regarding Martin Luther King and their, in, his impact. Um, in the district, and it's those types of things that do be, bring people to events when we can honor their students. So I'm, I'm hoping that uh, we'll have another year where we can support that. Uh, shout out to really all the staff in the district, but sp specifically <clears throat> myself to Sally Brown and Robin Daly. <laughs> they are our unsung heroes who keep us going, um, who get things out, who. Um, you know, who support each other with Robin and Sally. We always need one. There's, I think, a requirement they both can't be out, even sick the same day. Otherwise, we would fall apart. But again, thank you so much to Robin and to Sally, who's um, um, at a fun celebration for the next uh, week or so. And uh, that's all I have. If there's any questions about my report. Okay, seeing and hearing none. Uh, look to school liaison reports. Um, uh, I don't know if Ayana can speak. Maybe I'll start with Mr. Wollaston, and I don't know if she's able to chat, if there's anything to add. So Mr. Wollaston, regarding Windsor High. Uh, I just want to say a quick congrats to the baseball team, the artists that presented their art, um, and the girls and boys track and field. Also to all graduates, um, and teachers and admin because, you know, coming to the end of another year, hopefully some of us can just take a breather and rest and reset for the next one. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, a, been a, another long, challenging year. And as we just get ready for the summer, just try to find your balance all over again. And I'm just grateful to have you guys here to even support us at the board. You guys, I know it's been a long, challenging one, but thank you all for everything you do. Thank you. Any questions for Windsor High? Seeing none, uh, Mr. Halleck, Sage Park. 
<coughs> um, thank you very much. Um, on, on May 25th, I attended the 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 a uh, spring a uh, music concert. Um, um, you, um, um, that went uh, very well. There was not not an empty seat in the house, so, uh, um, so that was great. That was great to see. Um, um, all the all the students did very very well, um, and uh, um, many of you um, who may, um, um, who may know my wife, uh, Kate, got to play the the uh, Clara, the a uh, clarinet. Uh, 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 with our sixth grade. A class which was they were all amazing um, so, so definitely a shout out to everyone who went to that 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 event and participated it was definitely a, a great event so thank you all also want to congratulate our our uh, our eighth graders on the recent uh, promotion uh, to the high school um, and uh, um, just a reminder, I know it's a little ways away yet, but um, August 29th will be our first uh, full day of school um, back uh -oh. in, in August. And that's all I have for this evening. Okay. Thank you. Any questions regarding Sage Park? Seeing none. Uh, Clover Street School, Mr. Lockhart. Just wanted to say <clears throat> um, congratulations to those that are moving on to Sage Park. And congratulations to those that are moving in um, to Clover next year. I um, want to thank you to those parents and staff members that um, took a great interest in the playground project at the um, at Clover Street. And want to thank them for really staying on DPW for cleaning up the areas, especially before field day. That was huge to them. And um, thank you for the town of Windsor for coming through and making sure that that happened for them as well. Um, but as always, to the teachers and staff, have a joyful and restful summer, and we look forward to having you back um, later on in the year. Thank you. Any questions for Clover? Okay. Um, Jill, John F. Kennedy School. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say congratulations to all the students on their promotion, and thank you for the teachers and all staff at all the schools for doing such a great job. Um, I was really happy to attend some of the events that went on. I had the opportunity to go to Sage Park Middle School and to see the concerts, and it was the first concert that they had in two years, and I was really blessed to see our student representative there. <laughs> <laughs> and I attended other many other events too, so it was really nice and everybody did such a great job. Thank you. Any questions regarding JFK? Uh, Ms. Galinsky, Oliver Ellsworth. Great, thank you. Um, so OE actually had a couple of really exciting events that happened over the last month. Um, I had mentioned that they had their spring carnival, which took place after our last board meeting, and it was a massive success. They had no idea that it was going to be such a big turnout. I think at one point there must have been at least over 500 people there. Um, cars were lining the streets on Kennedy Road, which if anyone has ever been to Oliver Ellsworth, they have a very long section to be able to be parking their cars. And the police were actually called a couple of times because the residents on Kennedy Road didn't understand what was going on. And so the police had to just tell them, like, everything's under control. It's a school event. Everything is great. So I think everyone really had a great time. Of course, they had field day as well, and the kids had an absolute blast. Um, but one thing that stood out to me when the high school seniors graduated was they all came to the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they did this. And so for anyone who isn't aware, they went to, every, to all four elementary schools being bussed in. And to just see them going into the school and just talking with the kids and just participating with them, I think is such an important, it's just, it's just so important for these young kids to see that this is what you can aspire to be. And they went through all the schools. And so my, my two children go there. I think everyone already knows at this point. But they were so excited. They're like, oh, like, these older kids came in. And to just have them become role models was super important. And then lastly, uh, on the very last day of school, all OE staff members came out and waved to the kids on the buses as they left. It was just the cutest parade I've ever seen in my life, I think. So uh, kudos to them for having, for being just such an incredible, like, caring staff. Thank you. Any questions uh, for OE? 
Seeing none, uh, Mr. Panos, Paquanic School. Yeah, the Paquanic School had their second grade promotions uh, going, um, on the last day of, of school, and um, the ceremony uh, was opened by the kid governor. Kid governor, and he said, uh, "I understand he did a terrific job." And um, uh, <coughs> his focus of his speech was um, was on um, you don't have to be um, you don't have to wait to be great. In other words, you have to you can do things well. The kids did a lot of fundraising for things like the for Ukraine and the, and for the housing authority. Things. Uh, so um, uh, they were very proud of that. Um, uh, apparently, they've had a lot of uh, they're well connected um, according to surveys. Um, that they took with the staff and the student and the uh, parents that they're well connected with the school. Um, they have. Um, uh, They've had um, home visits. They said they had more home visits than ever. It's over 100. So they did a, a terrific uh, job. Um, their, uh, their academics uh, overall, they had 60% uh, were at or above uh, the goal. And um, the first graders in particular had 80% of them were at or above. This is for the STAR assessment. And uh, so they expect. Um, great things next year. Um, there was a, the PTO did organize a, a, um, a game, a, a, uh, an event, as if with a, you know, uh, to see the baseball game of the Yard Goats. Um, I could not get to see that, but I understand that went over well. And, um, and of course, they're also going to have the reading uh, challenge over the summer, and I guess the math challenge, too, will be coming. So. Uh, that's, that's the news for it. Hopefully, uh, there'll be very little slippage over the summer. Thank you. Yeah, we're not allowing summer slide this year, <laughs> just to <laughs> let everybody know. Um, any questions for Paquanic? Okay. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a discussion, possible action to extend the current hybrid format for Board of Ed meetings. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. President, I move to extend the current hybrid meeting format for 2022-2023 school year for board members and the public for regular board meetings, including special meetings and leaving finance committee as hybrid and policy curriculum long range planning committee meetings as virtual. Executive committee meetings would be decided by the BOE president. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Discussion? Mr. Panos? Well, I'm very happy to see uh, that um, you have come to your senses here, uh, so to speak. I said, collaboration. I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't gloat. No, collaboration, yes. That's, uh, no gloating. Thank you very much. This is a very good uh, thing to do. Uh, Mr. Lockhart? Even though I'm the maker of the motion, I'm still torn on this matter. I, I do understand that this um, makes it very easy for the public, and I'm very in strong support of that. Um, I'm also a traditionalist where I believe we should be in our seats, um, but I do understand the benefit of um, the ease of getting these meetings done more efficiently. So um, I am conflicted. Um, however, I, I represent the greater group, um, so I will be in support of this. So. Me coming to my senses, I, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what, I, what I would say is that um, if I had my way, we would all be in our seats for every single meeting. But I understand that it's a new age, a new time, and um, it's a new way of doing business. So I accept it as is. And, and one of the things to me that's been a positive of the virtual committee meetings is we've had the ability for people to come home from work where they may not have had time to come in to to come down to LP depending on where they live, but they're able to possibly get things done around the house. And if they're not on the committee, still listen in on what's going instead of having to wait for their representative to say, this is what transpired at the committee meeting. And so it's increased, um, though I'm sure Mr. Panos has trouble that he's not able to speak other than three minutes to some of these meetings. Um, <laughs> it has increased our board to be directly involved of what's going on in those committee meetings. And as for the hybrid 
to the community, again, we've heard from many people mm -hmm. how good this has been not to have to come down yep. to say their, 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 um, what's on their mind to have that choice of watching from home. Mm -hmm. So uh, this motion also extends not only for board members but for the public to be able to participate in a hybrid manner. Um, and also vir the virtual manner of watching our, our committee meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so any other discussion on this, Mr. Halleck? Um, thank you. Um, um, I definitely agree uh, with all those points. I definitely I want to make uh, um, um, a one, uh, one other point about the video or about the, uh, the uh, discussion format in, in um, uh, uh, within the chat. I think that's a great thing as well for the community um, because if uh, if a member of our community is feeling either 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 anxious about coming down here, or have, or may have a speech difficulties, or or whatever the reason may be, um, um, it still gives them an opportunity to participate in our meeting. So I definitely think think that's a great thing as well, and I'm in full support of this motion. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Galinsky. Oh, sorry. Ms. Galinsky, sorry. Um, I just want to say thank you for bringing this to the table to have this discussion. Um, one of the biggest things is that we want the community members involved, and how can we reach them if we don't adapt to this amazing technology that is available today to actually be inclusive to everyone here? So, you know, to people who have young families, you know, they may actually work during the evenings, but might be able to take a break and to be able to tune in during some of this discussion. I think that this way we are actually bringing more people in and having their voice and their opinions heard. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wollaston? Yeah, I agree with Ms. Galinsky. Um, I, though I've never thought about it in this light, sorry, until the, today, but I'll admit it. Because um, when the question is raised, I usually just think about us and should we be here in our seats or should we not? But in considering of the the people of the town, it's extremely inclusive and we need to extend our doors to be open past just these doors if it allows people to have their voice heard. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Cantor? Thank you. I appreciate this opportunity too. I know I'd like to be here in my seat, but sometimes I can't always and I really think that we need to um, allow our community to be able to listen and hear and see what's going on and participate. And, you know, I, I look at the cost, cost of gas and groceries and I don't think people want to do extra driving and everything at this and they want to be able to be able to communicate and participate in this. So I appreciate that. Thank you. And, and I think we've shown as board members that um, most of the time we are all in our seats. Mm -hmm. So it's not mm -hmm. as if we're saying, oh, I don't have, it's a meeting, but I can be at home. So everybody has respected mm -hmm. the, the fact that we've been voted by people to be here and mainly to be in our seats. But this gives us the flexibility um, and it's shown to be working fairly well. We don't always hear mm -hmm. people. That's the nature of technology, and I, I won't blame Kevin. Kevin, you're fired. No. Um, <laughs> uh, um, but I, I, I think, and, and I, hear, I hear Mr. Lockhart, and I'm not too far away from his position, but I, I think I've, I've kind of, I've come to, uh, to, to believe uh, that in general we're all re respecting um, uh, our, our responsibilities to be in our seats when we, when we can be. Yep. Let, me, let me just make another Mr. comment. Um, one of the, for board members, a, a really good, neat thing about this is that you can, you can essentially go to every committee meeting. You can listen in because it's really uh, something, I mean, to be traipsing down here all those times, you know, just to go there and, and all you can do is talk to the audience, the visitors at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, no, I don't care for that. But, uh, <laughs> so uh, you can, you know, you can, uh, you can uh, give questions, you know, to uh, a member to ask or to, to talk about. But uh, but That's you see the presentations the by the staff, by the administration. Uh, and, you know, when it's when it's done more fully than when it's done here at the board meeting. So it is a is a, it's, it's an increase in efficiency for the board for communication. 
And, and the same thing sort of applies to the workshops and the special uh, meetings, too. You, know, you, can, you can tune in. Sometimes you can't make it. Sometimes you're out of state for whatever reason. Um, it's, uh, uh, there's, there's no reason just because you're in, um, you know, South Carolina or something, or, let's say, or Puerto Rico, <laughs> <laughs> why you can't participate in a meeting. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, yes. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Last comments? Seeing and hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Motion carries 9-0-0. Next item of business is the superintendent's report. Dr. Hill? Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> On Monday, June 6, we graduated the Windsor High School class of 2022. Araya Miller is the valedictorian for the Windsor High School class of 2022. Araya will attend Yale University in the fall and plans to major in political science. <clears throat> and um, she gave an amazing speech, by the way. Mm -hmm. Taylor Filatico, who's also uh, the fall student rep to the board, is the salutatorian for the, or excuse me, salutatorian for the Windsor High School class of 2022. Taylor will attend Bates College in the fall and plans to double major in biology and neuroscience. And she spoke to all of us being our own sons and people around us being part of our solar system. These are some interesting mm -hmm. students. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I already said that Taylor was the BOE uh, fall representative for 2021. Our credit recovery and credit accumulation program begins on June 27th. The summer enrichment program will run again this summer at Windsor High School and Oliver Ellsworth School. It will begin on July 5th. And we have approximately 500 students participating in our programs. The Windsor Public Schools summer food program will be held from June 27th to August 12th, closed on July 4th from Monday through Friday. Our locations this year are the Wilson Library at 365 Windsor Avenue, from 11.30 a.m. to 12.15 p.m. And the Gosley Pool slash Stroh Park from 12 p.m. to 12.45 p.m. I want to thank all of our community scholarship partners. Our graduating seniors received over $130,000 in scholarships at their Senior Scholarship and Awards Night on June 2nd. Windsor High School cheerleaders and members of the Black Excellence Club participated in the Juneteenth celebration held on the town green this past Sunday afternoon. It was dance, poetry, and singing. It's always great to see our students out in the community. Tonight is the last regular Board of Ed meeting for the 2021-2022 school year. Our next regular meeting will be on Tuesday, September 20th, 2022 at 7 o'clock p.m. in the boardroom at LPW. And you will also still be able to log on online as we just heard the vote. Thank you to Jenny Haran, Howard Marsh, and Jamil Ahmed from WinTV, and Robin Daly, our stenographer and Zoom extraordinaire. <laughs> Sally made me put that word in there. Um, with the assistance of Mr. Sam Batchelder um, and Kevin, thank you, we have been back in LPW boardroom since February. And I just want to say, I know this is not a gigantic room, but I like us having our own boardroom. I like having the separate space. Um, it gives us a more professional appearance, uh, professional vibe, and it also gives the board its own identity from the town chambers, very much so. Um, <clears throat> and, um, I know I, I wanted to remind uh, some that had concerns about our paras and security. We are going to ensure that there's uh, training for them this fall around uh, reporting student infractions. So um, we will be creating a particular process just for them um, because we won't, we won't change our system, which is online, but we will ensure that they have a process to utilize to report infractions and they will be trained in that process this fall. Um, and then there was a question about how are books selected for the library? And these are non-textbooks. So these are just books in our school libraries. 
And I asked um, our Humanities Director, Ms. Bonnie Feynman, to be available to answer this question tonight. Is she online? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Great. Thank you so much, much for your patience tonight. I wanted to be there, but I'm a bit under the weather. So the virtual option that you just discussed was very helpful for me this evening. Um, thank you to Dr. Hill for allowing me to uh, discuss this from, from home. Um, I wanted to start in answering the question with just a reminder to the public. Obviously, the board would know this, that we do have a board policy under instruction, uh, namely uh, under equipment, books, and materials that does speak to the selection of books um, in our schools. Um, it does uh, give some guidelines for what, what should be selected, um, such as uh, representing a wide range, diversified range of quality materials, which support instruction from the approved curriculum. Uh, these materials will actually accurately portray the cultural and racial diversity as well as the male female roles in our society. Um, that's the first section uh, under that policy. Um, and there are some other parts of it that mention uh, what we do when we want to discard books and things like that. But pertaining to the question, um, I think this is a good, a good starting point. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that we have certified personnel who serve as library media specialists. They are trained in exactly how to uh, manage a library. Um, we rely on them just like we would our classroom teachers to make appropriate decisions, professional decisions about what is contained in our school libraries. Um, for example, uh, they do select books that are uh, comprehensively reviewed by professional sources. Uh, for example, a school library journal might be one that we would look to. We try to, they try to uh, make sure we have a range of formats for the needs of our students, like audio books, large formats, interactive books, et cetera, and that they are interesting, relevant books for our students um, and meet the developmental and maturity level needs of, of all of the children in the, in the schools. Um, you know, some, sometimes books get added to the collection in different different ways. You know, obviously the, um, as I mentioned, the library media specialists um, using their expertise are going to select books that um, they feel will meet the, the criteria that I just mentioned. But sometimes we have students or teachers who uh, request books. Um, the library media folks will review them to make sure that they uh, belong with the school library. But, um, you know, can can happen that way that uh, get requests from students or on occasion, I might even request some books that um, I think will be a good match in alignment with our curriculum. Um, as I, I did inquire with our library uh, department a little bit about how they how they do this. Um, they just said they are, are very consistent in making sure to represent the needs of all of the students. Um, and they are very cognizant about having collections that are, are relevant um, and are um, interesting. And, you know, they don't shy away from having uh, collections of books that have a diversity of topics um, and viewpoints, um, because that is a, a key facet of a library for students to be able to read and, um, and grow and, and obtain knowledge that they can apply um, and make decisions about where they stand on things. Uh, so I'm not I'm not sure if you have questions from there, but I tried to provide an overview for everybody. Okay, questions. Mr. Panos. Uh, I, I think the issue here, uh, obviously, <clears throat> but if you take this, let me just point out if you take a diversity of viewpoints. Um, uh, I'm sure there are viewpoints that. You know, I, I needn't bring up here, which are, uh, which simply would not be appropriate for a library, any library. There are, you know, so uh, the idea that we do diversity for anything, for any viewpoint, uh, is simply not true. You have to have standards for it. 
So, uh, you know, your these, um, you know, the, the standards that you mentioned here, you know, diversity um, are, you know, f fine if you if what you're talking about is political viewpoints um, and things which are appropriate uh, for uh, students who are of a particular age. But if you have explicit um, content, this is uh, graphic um, uh, descriptions of uh, sex acts and things of this nature, uh, there's no literary reason to have such things in, in a library for 12-year-olds or 13-year-olds or, or even high schoolers. I mean, if you, this is, uh, so there have to be some standard. Um, we had someone who showed up and gave an explicit example. Um, of this a few months ago. Uh, so I, I think that the, the question is, what are the standards? Um, you, what are the standards that are used? And in, you know, there's, so yes, you, you have to have a diversity of viewpoints, but the, the particular material um, has to be something which is uh, in, in decent taste. It is, it is instead of being crude and, you know, um, informal to a point that is just you know, debasing. So uh, uh, that's the origin of the kind of question uh, about this. It's, it's not that there is, you know, d diverse cultures and, and things of this nature, uh, diversity of interests, subjects, or what have you, but it's the kind of, um, the kind of crude language that, uh, descriptions that, are, that are characterize a particular book mm -hmm. and Things that books that might be similar to that. There are others out there. Uh, you know, whether they're in our library, I don't know. Whether the others are, but certainly the one that uh, was brought up was uh, kind of striking. So that, that, that's that's the thrust of the of the issue. Yes, I totally understand um, your point. Um, I just to just to remark on that particular uh, book, it was not mentioned in the. Um, uh, when the, the parent came, came to, to talk, talk to the to board, them. but that book actually was never even used in the classrooms. Um, Mrs. Jorgensen and her team made the decision that um, they weren't going to even have it as a choice. So the book actually never even was used. Um, and it's in the library, though. It is in the library. I yep, I agree with you. It is in the it is in the library. Um, and you know, sometimes I mean, and, and I hear what you're saying, like books that are crude for the sake of being crude are certainly not, um, you know, don't, that don't have an educational value certainly are, are, are not appropriate. Um, it was deemed that this particular book in its reviews from the School Library Journal um, and other sources that are professional resources um, for library media specialists that it, it had value for children from middle school to high school. Now, obviously with what the parent read, I can see the opposition to it. Um, but, you know, there are some books that are going to have some content that is uh, maybe questionable, but they may also have educational value in other ways. Um, so it's, it's tough. I mean, we, we'd have to remove pretty much every Shakespearean play from our, <laughs> our libraries um, to some degree if we were going to remove books that have overtly sexual content. But um, I absolutely hear what you're saying. Um, the library media folks, they did, uh, they did talk to me about, um, it's not just you know, racial diversity and other kinds of diversity, by the way, with, with the book selections. Um, it's about experiences, perspectives, building empathy, um, and then the opposite, which is like what not to include, right? So, um, which I think you're, you're speaking to here, um, and for example, our collections do not contain books that would promote ideas that oppress people, devalue people, or, you know, uh, undermining to, to people. Um, we don't have any specific standards that you, you are talking about that, that you could find in a board policy. Um, we, like I said before, as far as library books go, because they are choices, they're not books that students are being intentionally taught, assessed, et cetera. Um, you know, we're going to have a more 
a, a larger array of books that are available in a library because they're not being explicitly taught in the curriculum. Um, uh, so beyond what's in the policy, like I said, we don't we don't have particular standards. The library media specialists are trained in library science, and they're going to use the resources at hand and their network and input from lots of different, um, you know, lot, lots of different places to make decisions about the books that are going to be going to be in our libraries. On standards, um, other than the so-called professional sources, since uh, probably what has happened in in the wider society is that in some of these professional organizations is that they have dropped all standards, um, and you know Windsor should do better. Um, and, and I, um, I'm surprised that we don't have a policy that at least says some sort of language about appropriate content. Uh, but in any case, I would expect that our our own uh, school librarians and, and our own schools would understand that would understand what these are, would have some you know would, would apply the common sense standards. Um, there is you know the, it, it's one thing for someone to make an oblique reference to uh, a sex act or something like this in a, in, a, in a book, but uh, the, uh, the the kind of descriptions that exist in some of these uh, are simply beyond the pale and uh, just not something that should be used in in school. There's certainly a uh, uh, a large difference, and um, so uh, so I just leave you with that: that the professional sources are not very well. Whatever professional sources you're using. Uh, obviously, if they agreed to this kind of book um, and this kind of language, they do not have appropriate standards. And the fact, and I, I don't know what the board policy is, but um, but I would expect that the, you know, that the staff would have their own and would recognize um, that, you know, this sort of material. Well, you you can find something else. There's an infinite amount of material out there for all sorts of, of good books. Uh, so I'll just leave you with that, and maybe we should take it up on in policy. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Wallace? Yeah, oh. what, the, what the policy does say is, uh, number seven, it is recognized that opinions differ concerning appropriateness of instructional materials. Occasionally, an individual or group may find instructional materials used in the schools conflict with their views. Parents and guardians may challenge materials in accordance with the administrative regulation. So we do have uh, we do have something in place that allows uh, parents, families to uh, challenge materials. Um, and I think I think what I mean this is just my opinion, but I think what would need to be considered moving forward when we're talking about these issues is uh, number one is is the text actually being intentionally taught and assessed. Or could the student choose to read something else? Um, I think that's important. And the other thing is that, you know, it's a slippery slope. I mean, what when what do you end up including or excluding? Like I mentioned, for example, after <laughs> being a literature major for my bachelor's and master's degrees, I mean, I if we were putting in some standards around explicitness of text, we'd have to remove pretty much all of Shakespeare, all of Chaucer. I, so, so it's a, it's a, it's a slippery, it's a slippery slope. Um, I can provide the board with uh, some of the titles of the professional resources and journals that library media specialists in our district and other districts are using to make decisions about um, what to add or not add. To collections, they're pretty. They're pretty standard, um, peer reviewed. A lot of them. Um, so I'm not sure which standards you're referring to that they have negated. But um, like I said, I'd be happy to provide the board with a list of what is being used on the, uh, you know, on, on our end or most library media uh, ends to select books. the other way, uh, just to use that same argument, then everything is permitted. So 
you know, obviously there have to be some standards, and, and, and it is appropriate for us, as I say, if it's not going to be the Board of Ed, it's certainly our professionals, to recognize the difference between what is obviously crude material and obviously is something which is an oblique reference to something. I mean, maybe, um, what was it, uh, Jersey Kaczynski's was a bit over the, uh, uh, being there, what was the name of the book, um, that was a bit of a controversy some, oh, it was quite a while ago. Um, but, you, you know, the, you, you can get them in, in there that, um, that, it, that caused the controversies in, the, I think, I believe it, it was probably in the late 90s. Um, uh, it was an assigned book, um, and it, it just had a few areas, but nothing at all like the book that was, that was um, that you're talking about here, or, you know, the 57 bus, or, or there, there are others um, out there. Uh, the, as for a, a parent having a choice, it, the choice occurs, at, let's say, in that particular book that I just mentioned, um, the the controversy came out that, that it was an assigned, it was an assigned book, uh, and the parent didn't hear about it until the daughter who was reading it came and said, "Well, this is this is pretty bad," and then the parent came down and complained about it. In other words, they were not told about these various passages. So it's one thing to say that someone may choose another book, but you have to know what is in the book, first of all, you know, to, to begin with. So it's, there's, there's, a, there's an incident of, well, who's going to make this judgment? Well, obviously, I think you could. You know, you, could, you should be able to, and, and so should your, your English teachers and uh, your, and, and others, you know, and you should be able to tell the difference between something which is openly crude and something which is an oblique reference to it, uh, is a, a, a kind of a, a, a you know, offhand comment, uh, something. So uh, I, I think the, I'll just return to that, that the district should be, should be able to make its judgment and not simply trust outside sources, regardless of how professional they are. Mr. Wollaston. Okay. I'm happy to engage in whatever conversation the board would like to have about it. And I don't want to belabor the, um, the issue with the book that was called the 57 bus, but there was a communication sent home to families and the book was a choice. It was not a book assigned to the whole class. So I just have to be accurate in how that was uh, portrayed. But again, happy to work with the board on and work with Dr. Hill and the team on any any aspect of this. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Wallace. Yeah, I was just wondering, well, before I begin what I, I'll say, I was just wondering, um, just, just I have a general question to you maybe. Um, what, what is the order when we, um, we have a question? Because um, I kind of had a, a question for a while and we're going back and forth. Can we have it in a way where one person gets to express what they feel and we go on different <laughs> sides of the aisle? If there is a, may, I'm, not, may, I'm just not sure about how it goes. So may, I, may, I, may I just address? The, the issue is I was given the floor and therefore I had a conversation. Now I've, and I've given up the floor right. and I'm not going to ask any questions. If you can ask all the questions you want. I just wanted to know. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a, it's a very good question. Yeah, he had the floor, so it was back and forth. All right. So now <clears throat> the floor is yours, and okay. if you have follow-up right. questions, that, that's, that's before I look to anybody else. All right. It's, it's yeah, that's all you. I wondered. That's no. all I wondered. No, no harm, no foul. I was just, <laughs> I was just wondering the process. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> so I guess the first thing I'll say is that in high school I had to read *To Kill a Mockingbird*. It's a word, a book where there's you know, N-word hard R, in I, as a black man, has to have to listen to this. Maybe whoever is reading decides not to say the word. Maybe whoever is reading decides not to say the word. It is up to their discretion. But this is a book that we had to read, and it was in the curriculum. To some people, that may be inappropriate for me to have to hear someone say that, especially if 
the teacher I have is not a person of color, but I'm a student that has to hear this teacher read the book or whichever student is given the floor to read the book. So we can have that discussion all day long, I believe, with many books, as she mentioned, many Shakespearean books as well, because just some of the content in there is, is very mature. And when you watch the movies to these books, they're oftentimes rated R books. They're not PG or PG-13 movies when they come out in the theaters. And um, I think a, 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 a big, big deal, even with the book that was mentioned, was that the book was pulled prior to the meeting. So it sounds like to me, as was said, there's a filter in place, right? So they go through whatever third party site they have to see if the book is a reputable book. I can imagine there's a lot of books in the library and each librarian has not read every single book in the library. I, I can imagine that would be almost impossible for them to do that and do whatever other job they have to do as well. So I'm not really expecting them to have to open up every single book and read every single book every time. I, it just seems, it's, it's a pretty big library. I'm sure you guys have seen it. And I don't think that's realistic. That's why we have to go to a, a third party, which sometimes we can just get a, a good idea if this is a good fit or not. And the final catch can that we have is in the policy, which Ms. Feynman read. If a parent feels like the book is not appropriate, they have the, the, the right to a hearing. That's, that's a good structure to me. In my opinion, that's a good structure. We, we, we get it through this small filter, and some of the books might be read by the librarians. And then the final say is a parent can come up and have a hearing and say, hey, we don't think this one. You think, we think one fell through the cracks, so to speak. And you should get this removed. So said, so done. The book wasn't even an option for the kids to read when it came up to us. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I think I, any other comments? Uh, Ms. Cantor. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I found the book very offensive for junior high students to read. I would never want my son to come home reading that book, and I wouldn't want him to have access to that. I think 6th, 7th, and 8th graders should not have access to that. And personally, I don't even think high school students should be reading that. I think they can find more value in other literature with many more, more meaningful um, statements and theories and different processes. I just think that the librarians should have seen that and pulled it. And I think that at the beginning of school, if you're going to send out something like that, you want students to read that. The parents should be notified by email, text, and it should have the documentation in it prior to school beginning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> OK. Um. Thank you, Ms. Feynman, for being available and also for differentiating a little bit about the differences between books that can be chosen by students um, versus um, books that are going to be readily assigned. We know there is a formal process to go through curriculum if a book is going to be considered um, to be used in the classroom. And um, are, is every book read by everyone? Probably not, but at least. Um, the board is given an opportunity um, through the curriculum committee and afterwards um, to, to look at any of the books that are on that list and to, to read up on them um, before uh, we approve them. Uh, next order of business. Oh, sorry. We still the superintendent report, right? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Dr. Hill, back to you. <laughs> I don't know if that was your last order of business for the. Anything else? Nope, thank you, Mr. President. That's it. That concludes the report for me. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. I'll look to Leonard or Nathan. Anything to report? I don't think there have been any meetings recently. And Ms. Taylor, anything from curriculum? Mm -hmm. I don't think, again, there's been a meeting, so. Nope. <clears throat> uh, the next order of business is other matters. She said and, no. Uh oh. Just for, just for the record. She, she said no? Okay. Yeah, yep. Thank you. When you, say, when you say she said no, I keep hearing, I'm, uh, I'm hard of hearing. I'm then, so sorry. Then, and she typed no yes, in, she the did, chat. in the chat. That is, that is the appropriate <clears throat> you're correct. Well, eventually I did catch on to that, but that was halfway <laughs> through the meeting. 
Oh, my mic is on, sorry, no. <laughs> um, other matters, announcements, uh, regular Board of Ed meetings. Board of Ed special meeting on Thursday, June 30th, 2022 at 6.30 in the LPW boardroom. The next Board of Ed regular meeting is Tuesday, September 20th, 2022. Wow, it's a ways to go. 7 p.m. in LPW boardroom. Uh, next order of business is audience to visitor. Uh, Ms. Daly, if you could read. I don't know if people would go back and yeah, forth. Yeah, so. yeah, at the after that. Okay. Yeah. Down the last word. Good evening. This is Robin Daly from the superintendent's <clears throat> office. If there's anyone from the public who would like to address the board, you may do so in two different ways. If you are using the Zoom application on your mobile device or computer, you may enter your comments into the Q&A feature located at the bottom of the Zoom menu bar. Or you may raise your hand on your computer if your device has a microphone by selecting the participants icon on the Zoom menu bar and then clicking raise hand or by dialing star nine on your phone. You'll be given three minutes to speak. Please state your name and address. When you are called on, you'll be prompted with you are now unmuted. For clear communication, we ask that you do not place your call on speakerphone. No comments can be made against the employees of the school district or children outside of your own. Okay, I'm gonna go again for inside the, the building. Uh, anybody who would like to address the board? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Will Pelkey, 133 Portman Street. Um, <clears throat> would like to say thank you for your service for the, uh, this past school year. Um, Mr. Lockhart, despite your fandom with the Dallas Cowboys and your erroneous ways there, uh, I very much appreciate your sentiments regarding the hybrid meeting. Um, not so much for the public part, I'm very much in support of, of that. Um, that has been useful, uh, not for me with these board meetings, but I know it's been useful for me with town council and other meetings. So as a member of the public, that's great. Um, I would really hope that the next time this comes around that the board would see fit to make sure that uh, all of you who ran for office or in the case of the newest decided to, decided to join and offered their services would be committed to being here in person in every single time. Now, I know there's illness. I know there's other things like that. But I think showing the community and showing constituents and, and citizens um, that you're committed to being here all the time, as much as most of you are, I think that's uh, a little bit important. You, you know, you signed up for the job. You should be here. It's just my, my, uh, my opinion on that one. And then as a former teacher, I'm still going to give out a homework assignment. I've plugged this before. Um, uh, Ms. Clayton, not for you, but I'll say it to the first time to you. Your homework assignment, please continue working on vocational, professional, et cetera, uh, curriculum ideas and implementation. Um, I'm very much looking forward to seeing what the results of the uh, fired uh, uh, classroom uh, uh, firefighter classroom lessons and, and that is and I, I hope that's a big success success and can branch out to some other areas as well so again I'm gonna give you guys some homework some summer reading or something to do please take a look at that and let's get more of that implemented in Windsor thank you thank you, thank you very much anyone else in the boardroom seeing none uh, miss Daly somebody uh, in on the phone or through zoom there is one attendee with their hand raised. Ms. Grossman, you are <clears throat> unmuted. Hi, thank you. Um, Sally Grossman, Niles Road. Um, I wanted to, to speak about um, an article in the Journal Inquirer concerning um, our mascot. But before I get to that, I did just kind of want to um, add to the discussion on whether or not the meeting should continue to be hybrid. Um, and I can say, you know, as a parent of two small children, um, having a hybrid meeting makes it a lot easier for me to attend. And even for board members, life happens. And I don't think that um, even elected officials need to be present in every single meeting in person. Um, I think allowing elected officials 
to have the option to attend meetings virtually would open the door to allowing more people to run for office, like more people with young children um, who may not be able to commit to being in person um, otherwise. But as far as um, our mascot goes, um, I remember a couple of years ago that we had lost funding because um, the Windsor Warrior mascot um, was deemed inappropriate. Um, I think it's because of a feather and arrow, um, which ties to the indigenous um, community. Um, and according to this Journal Enquirer um, article from a couple days ago, um, Dr. Hill had stated that there is no, um, there's been no effort to change the mascot, which means that we lose funding um, from the state because of that. So I'm really hoping um, that, um, you know, during the summer um, that the board can kind of, you know, um, think about whether or not they want to address this issue and whether or not they want to continue to, um, you know, receive this funding because it, with the pandemic and with um, so many students being um, behind, I I think our school system can use as much money as it can in, in getting rid of, um, you know, a couple of feathers and arrows it seems to be a, um, you know, an easy price to pay for that. So thank you. Anyone else, Ms. Daly? There are no other hands raised, and there are no comments in the Q&A feature. Okay, then without objection, I'm gonna close audience to visitor. Uh, next item is an executive session. Mr. Lockhart. Further, I move that the Board of Education into executive session for the purpose of discussing ratification of the agreement between the Windsor Board of Education and the CSEA, comma, SEIU, Local 2001, which is the Windsor Schools Nurses Association, before taking possible action in the regular meeting. We will invite Superintendent Dr. Terrell Hill and Ms. Danielle Batchel, the Director of Business Services and Human Resources, to be part of the discussion. Is second. there a second? Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos to go into executive session for the purpose of discussing uh, possible ratification of agreement between the Windsor Board of Education and CSEA, SEIU Local 2001. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor of going to executive session say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. She said yes. Abstention? She typed yes. Ty thank you. She typed <laughs> aye. <laughs> wow, we're literally there. Yeah. She, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> Motion uh, carries 900. We're to go to executive session. We're in recess. We're in recess at 855.
<laughs> little sweepy. I don't want to disappoint Paul. You know? No. He doesn't like to pick on I mean, weaklings. He wants someone to just tell him. Back. Just tell him he's just got to. Are you good to go? Taylor, I can barely hear. We are back uh, at the regular meeting, and um, at this point in time, I'll look for a motion from Mr. Lockhart. Mr. President, I move that the Board of Education vote to ratify the agreement between the Windsor Board of Education and the CSEA, comma, SEIU, Local 2001, open parenthesis, Windsor School Nurses Association, closed parenthesis, covering July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2025. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos to approve, to ratify the agreement. Uh, any discussion? Seeing and hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Mr. Taylor says aye. Okay, very good. Abstentions? <laughs> Motion carries 9 0 0. Um, I'd like to have uh, give opportunities to all board members to, to say uh, parting comments here, um, the last official meeting uh, of, of the year, starting first with our newest board member. Ms. Clays. Thank you very much. I just want to say thank you all for your support on, on the vote tonight. It was really um, wonderful, and I look forward to working with all of you. Um, also, for anybody in the public who might be listening now or later on, <laughs> um, my husband and I moved into Windsor in 1991. We've raised two girls here. They both went through the Windsor, Windsor Public School System. They've done amazingly well. They were extraordinarily prepared, so we're very proud of them and very thankful to this, um, the schools. Um, I work for the Connecticut Department of Social Services in a partnership with the School of Social Work, and in that role, I do a lot of instructional design and delivery for adults, so I'm used to that work, and we work with a lot of policy. So I'm very excited to be able to add to that and look forward to seeing you, I guess, in one more time and then a lot in September. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Halleck. Uh, thank you. Um, 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 I want to congratulate our newest board member. I look forward to working with you. Um, um, I hope everyone has a great summer. Um, congratulations. Uh, one more time to the class of 2022. I know you're going to go out there and do amazing things. Um, um, and we look forward to see to see uh, what you're going to be doing in the future. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing you all at some point over the summer. So, Sounds thank good. you. Thank you, Mr. Wollaston. Yeah, I was just going to say congratulations. Um, it's great to have you here, and I'm looking forward to having another teacher. <laughs> Ms. Galinsky. I'm going to piggyback off of what everyone else has said. Congratulations. I look forward to serving with you on the board. And then I want to wish everyone just a really enjoyable summer. Hope you guys can make some wonderful memories with your family and friends, and just enjoy yourselves, and let's come back with some fun stories to share. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know, Ms. Taylor, if you're connected or... I don't know if they even hear me. We hear you. Yay. <laughs> Let's do the meeting over again. <laughs> Let's not. But um, <laughs> congratulations, Darlene. Um, yeah, uh, you're great. And um, you're going to be great. You, you've sat in, in a seat similar before. <laughs> um, so we can learn a lot from you. And um, I just want to wish everyone a safe uh, summer. Uh, remember to not have, um, you know, people not 
locking any dogs, children in, in hot cars. That's one of those things that kind of just happens over the summers, uh, oftentimes people moving too fast. So um, when you're thinking about, you know, slow down and, and be a little more safe and um, everybody come back uh, well rested uh, in the fall. Take care. Thank you. Ms. Cantor. Thank you. I just wanted to this is great. It's really positive for the town of Windsor, and I look forward to working with you. Um, I have an email that I have from Dr. Barry, so I'd just like to make some announcements. And um, he, there are a lot of chess opportunities that are going to occur this summer. He's, it's going to start on 628, June 28th, at the Wilson Library from 11 a.m. to 1230. All ages and skill sets are welcome, and he will be there every Tuesday during the summer. There's a Monarch Festival on July 9th at 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The Windsor Senior Center from July 20th to 20 I'm sorry, July 20th at 3.30 to 6 p.m. and September 9th from 5 to 7 p.m. And then there are the summer block parties in the park on July 15th, July 29th, and August 12th. And he said he'll be available for one-on-one -on -one sessions on small group or small group sessions. So I would take advantage of that if you had the opportunity. And I just wanted to wish everybody a very nice summer and to enjoy yourselves with your family and friends and stay rested. Don't do anything to get hurt. And stay hydrated with watermelon. <laughs> Spoken Thank like a, a parent and nurse. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lockhart. Thank you. Just quickly for crack. Um, we just recently passed the budget for them. Um, the state didn't, <clears throat> the CGA did not fund them fully as they had hoped and as the way they have lobbied for. Um, if this keeps going, going the way it is, um, I see no way for CREC to be sustainable without them charging that, those, those extra dollars back to the supporting districts. Um, they're, they're providing a service, but they're, they're, their funding is just so upside down right now. So. I um, want to keep a close eye on that. I know we support CREC, but I also know that we support trying to keep our kids in district and bringing them back as well, providing services that then that the parents are looking for. So that's definitely something on my radar with the CREC Council, and I'll keep everybody up to, updated with that next academic year. Uh, with CABE, I did some testifying, especially in the area of um, low funding, also in the area of special ed funding. Um, testified that we lost about a quarter million dollars um, one year and that, you know, now it's going to get worse, so that gives me more fuel for my fire. But for statewide, this is something that's going on in all the state, in all the districts in the state. So it's, it's not a political situation. This is just a, a, a funding formula issue that's impacted everyone that, that needs to be truly addressed. Um, this evening, um, I was slightly late. Um, we are saying goodbye to um, the executive director, Mr. Rader. After 26 years as the executive director, he is retiring as of June 30th. Um, Patrice McCarthy, who is the deputy director and general counsel, will become the new executive director as of July 1st. Um, she's been in that position for 26 years, and this is something she's been waiting basically her whole career for, and it has now arrived for. So I wish them both well. Um, as far as CABE, the conference um, registration is, is, is opening up. Um, Mr. P um, President will be reaching out to every board member. It will be a Friday, Saturday concept, all day Friday and half day Saturday. Um, we would like to take advantage of the early bird registration sooner rather than later. So if you know you are coming, go, I'm going to the conference, please um, let David know, and we can take advantage of the early bird rate. And um, hopefully the, this board, we will go through the exercise with Sally and David um, in September of making sure that we maintain our distinction level as a board of education. I am um, sensitive to the concerns made the last time about the designation that was support, um, submitted to CABE on behalf of this board. And I'm sure um, the president will be working with us on that matter. Um, as far as if there's any political stances that this board would like to take and have CABE advocate for. Um, the delegate assembly is going to be looking for um, any type of submissions coming from boards of education across the state. Um, Windsor has some experience in this area. Um, Windsor was the one where we actually um, adjusted the school calendar where we can actually um, submit for graduation dates in September rather than waiting um, later in the year. 
that came directly from Windsor through the Delegate Assembly, adopted by CABE, and then it was pushed as a legislative priority, and it was passed by the CGA. So um, there's definitely some advocacy that can be done there as well. So to all the families, be safe, be well. I am personally um, looking forward to this particular summer, selfishly. I am expecting my first grandchild um, within the next two weeks. And I'm looking forward to be Papa, <laughs> and I am very excited about um, the prospects of my family growing. Uh, my, my oldest son is very ecstatic, nervous, and anxious at the same time. Um, but um, I'm looking forward to taking some downtime away from a lot of things that I do in my life to really just walk and smell the roses for a few moments before I get back up and running again. So, um, as you stated, um, let's enjoy some memories. Um, this will be a very memorable 2022, and I eagerly can not wait to get back to a board beat in September and to engage my fellow counterpart, Mr. Panos, in debate as we fight for the children in this um, town of Windsor. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. Lockhart. <laughs> Mr. Panos. Well, congratulations, <laughs> Mr. Lockhart. Thank you. On your prospect of grandfatherhood. Yeah. That's a, it will be a great, great thing. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And uh, congratulations on uh, Mrs. Clay's. Uh, I, uh, I, really, I really look forward to working with you. Uh, like I say, uh, this was great. It was a close vote, but you know, uh, you pulled right through, you know, I put it. And uh, thank you very much for, for uh, filling in. Uh, I think it's very important. And so uh, I wish everyone a, a happy summer, and uh, we'll see you in September. Thank you. Uh, yes, congratulations, Mr. Lockhart. Thank you. Mr. Panos and I can, can relate to the grandparenthood, how, how, what a good thing that is, versus parenthood. No. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, kids. Sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, uh, congratulations again to Darlene. Thank you so much for stepping up yep. and Thank willing you. to serve again. Yep. Uh, uh, it's great to have somebody who's going to be able to hit the ground running, know what, knowing what this work is like and willing to, to accept that challenge again. Um, congratulations to the board. I think we uh, have moved forward well together. I think that's important. We've gotten to know each other as the year has gone on. And I look forward to, to some informal sessions this summer where we can see each other. We can't debate any policy or anything, but see our, ourselves out at various functions throughout the town. Mm -hmm. And with the price of gas, there'll be a lot of sta staycations this <laughs> summer. Uh, again, uh, thank you again to the staff, um, uh, all the staff at Windsor Public Schools for continuously going above and beyond um, what we asked for. As I mentioned earlier, yes, it was great to have everybody back in the schools, but this is not business as usual. We have a lot of work to do, both as regarding social-emotional learning, but also achievement. And I know Dr. Hill is, is, is very interested in moving that needle as well. So I think it'll be a good partnership between uh, the, the schools and the board in moving, moving that needle for, for all our students. So again, thank you so much. And I'll entertain one more motion. Mr. President. Yes, sir. Move for adjournment. Is there a second? Second. Motion made by Mr. Lockhart, seconded by Mr. Panos. Any discussion? Seeing and hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Abstentions? Ms. Ayanna Taylor typed aye. Oh, okay. <laughs> and she said it. She said so it. it's 10 0 No, no. Not. Motion carries 9 0 It's 9.35, and we are adjourned.